Good afternoon, everyone. Um, Ed Bram Jones, yet yeah, from Norfolk Rivers Trust. Um, my father-in-law has also got an outdoor pig unit, um, LSB pig, sorry, close to here, um, for BQP. So um, it's very kind of much linked in, and I, you know, fully understand a lot of the issues um, that you're kind of having. Um, and also, I, I used to be a farm and reserve manager myself, so. Um, you know, this really presentation is around what we can kind of offer and some of the kind of issues we're seeing in the catchment. Um, so water sensitive farming, it's through the Rivers Trust um, and through the money originally came through the Broadland Catchment Partnership. Neil Punchard is here from the Broadland Catchment Partnership and the Cam Elu's catchment. And it's a joint project with WWF, um, the Panda people and Coca-Cola which you're probably all now thinking is a very strange relationship. Um, but it's been going for several years. We've been working since 2012 with them. Um, and it's around um, Coca-Cola's involvement, especially within East Anglia with sugar beet, um, and putting good quality clean water back into the environment um, through working directly with landowners and offering kind of a bespoke um, you know, kind of advice service and grant systems. So um, we offer these free and confidential farm visits. Um, we also have a separate project running at the moment called EU Topsoils, which is linked in with kind of Anglian Water. Um, Fiona briefly touched on it. Um, that is working with North Sea regions, other countries such as Denmark, um, Germany, uh, France, Holland, for example, to actually look at how we can work with landowners to improve the, either the quality or quantity of water. They're so interlinked. And there's funding that we're getting in that we match funds. So we're currently doing a potato trial down at Elverdon, looking at reducing diffuse pollution. And Topsoil is very much a partner with the Rivers Trust and Anglian Water, people like McCain's. So it's all about trying to kind of collaborate together. Um, these are the catchments here. This is the Broadland Rivers in here. This is the Cam Elius. Um, so that's where the original kind of fundings come into and in our services. But we also work in North Norfolk and North West Norfolk. And we are actually going to be doing some work down here as well. So we can be fairly flexible with where we work. Scotland is probably pushing it a bit far. Um, so we'll concentrate on East Anglia at the moment. Um, so the Broadland catchment um, has got the demonstration test catchment, which is one of three in the country. That's at Saul Farms, and that's actually a very good place for us um, to look at kind of getting data on nitrate leaching, um, diffuse pollution, cover crops. Um, so there's several years of data, which is some of the top data in the country. Um, they have actually got some lighter soils there, so there is some work going on at the moment looking at um, losses. So again, we, you know, we probably need to transferring that information into the pig environment. Here as well, this is a, a machine that um, Tesco's, so Tesco's are now funding a officer in the Broadlands and have actually funded this machine, which is a, a wonder wheel. It disrupts the wheelings in potatoes, where we often see um, runoff issues and that, you know, farmers can now go and borrow that, test it um, and use it in their beds and we're seeing really successful results with that. So again, you know, there's a lot of potential here for joining up with some of the suppliers. Um, the Cam Elius catchment, so this is where kind of my main focus has been. This is Swatham here, Saffron Walden um, down here, Barry St Edmunds and Ely. So, and um, after we're up here. So it's quite a large catchment again. Um, we co-host this with Anglian Water and the catchment partnerships is all from a thing called the catchment based approach. It came out two or three, well probably more than that actually, about four years ago. You know actually there's a lot of people doing work and no one's really talking to each other. Um, there's potential funding out there. How do we all work together to direct it into the right position? Um, and so we're very much focused in that from the, the Rivers Trust point of view. From that in the Cameo, uh, we've now got this water stewardship board which has been created. So it's directly trying to get businesses, especially with an agricultural focus. Um, and we've got you know, some quite 
big names in there. So we've got different kind of um, funding opportunities, um, you know, looking at what the issues are in the catchment and how we can go about, you know, getting it out onto farm and into the supply chain. Um, in East Anglia, we're still seeing you know, quite a few issues. Um, we're incredibly lucky here in terms of chalk streams. 90% um, are actually fed from the aquifer below our feet. Um, and only, they released recently, 15% are actually in good health. That's not just down to agriculture, though. That could be, um, you know, uh, weirs, for example. It could be a modified channel where it's been over dredged in the past. Um, it could be a water quantity issue from over abstraction for other issues. Um, but, you know, we, we really need to be getting them in better health. Um, and here are some of the issues we kind of see. This here, if you want to see the finest chalk stream in the country, you go to Berris and Edmonds, Tesco's there. They've concreted the whole of the River Lark through the middle there. It looks absolutely horrendous. Um, but, you know, we often see modified straightened channels um, and also kind of pollution, you know, it might be phosphates um, and barriers. We are still seeing this. This was last year up near our office near Holt. Uh, that was a potato field. Um, that some of the water, the rest of the water was kind of on the road about to go and flood someone's house. Um, and again, this is in kind of veg wheelings. So surface water is incredibly important, but also groundwater, because if we get into a situation where we're, we're at low levels and it has to be blended because, you know, we've got pollution incidents, if it's taken from rivers, we're going to see a real impact. Um, so obviously fish, insects and, and other life. I thought I'd just put this up here because I always think it's quite interesting to see how much we're losing and this is kind of the key thing which I don't think a lot of landlords are kind of realising is how long it actually takes to lose, to make back your soil. Um, and these losses that we're seeing each year in actual, um, you know, benefits um, economically are, are quite amazing. This here, I like to put this up because that's what everyone always seems to think that soil erosion looks like. It can literally just be a tram line with water coming off it would be enough to carry a significant amount of soil um, but usually it's the nutrients which are the issue. Um, and Kate and Speak from the, the Wine Ash Trust has done a big Nuffield scholarship which is really interesting to read in terms of kind of soil in, and engaging with farmers. So what we offer, um, we've got several different mapping types, several different layers. It takes EA, um, natural England data such as, you know, triple SIs. Um, it will take water company information. Um, also things like LIDAR, so topography. Um, and, we can, and also how WFD rivers are doing. And we can put it into a model. So we start to get a feeling for what's in the catchment. So this one here, for example, this is phosphates. Um, I think this is probably down by Barris and Edmonds is in here. We know phosphates are an issue in here because of soil type. It's failing WFD, um, topography, the chalk layer, etc. So it just directs us in the right way. And you know, we can kind of provide all these maps. We keep them confidential though, when we come and see, kind of see. This is probably the most important one though which is called SIMAP. So it's looking at source, pathway and receptor. So if you've got a big flash like this, there's a high potential there for runoff. So um, if it's green, it's pretty good. Well, very good. And yellow, you know, it's probably a bit iffy. Doesn't mean you can't use the field, but it's where we need to be looking at mitigation. And it's interesting as well, because actually the pathways on here, you'll often find there's a pathway coming here and someone goes and sticks a buffer strip up here. You know, which it, all we need to do really is be swapping the buffer strip and maybe putting some more buffers in here, you know, double fencing an area or leaving a buffer through the, the middle to get more vegetation. Also, you know, we need to be thinking where pathways and the receptors are 
Roads and tracks and wheelings are, are always the ones. Field drains though, we have seen before where people have actually cut grips into field drains thinking it's fine, it's off the field. If that's directly linked you know, to a, a water course, um, you know, we've actually probably just made, we're getting everything there even quicker. Another thing, you know, it's not just these water courses. Highways is one of the major ones we see. We've got a site very close to here where water and pollutants, we know travel about two miles down a hill into the actual um, river. So it's not actually an agriculture, that's a highways issue, but it just shows how quickly stuff can get there. Um, I'll quickly go over this, um, like Robert was saying, you know, kind of troughs and, and feeders, but soon I'm sure we'll all be using drones, um, like this sprayer here, the way technology's going, which would mitigate. Removing compaction, probably one of the best investments you can get, certainly on the family farm. It's made such a difference, that just initial kind of capping layer. Um, going in there but always get a spade out to kind of go out there um, you know and actually dig a hole. There's a farm I was on very recently I've bought a £60,000 direct drill. Um, they've never dug a hole though really since using it for the last five years and about a foot down there's a horrendous layer of compaction. So even though we've got this fantastic drill we still haven't really you know done the issue. We need to you know just quickly look at these basics. Um, and also doing it in the, the right conditions. There's a really good video on HDB, I think it's still there, that Philip Wright's done. Um, so watch that because it, it basically goes through it all. It's uh, very interesting. Paddock layouts as well. This is something that we're really interested in. Is this flip flap paddock and kind of strip grazing ideas. You know, always trying to keep 50% and then kind of moving them over, you know, every four to six months. The benefits I think we'd see definitely from surface water and wind erosion, and then the leaching side. Um, and, you know, I think also things like biodiversity, staff morale are all in there. We're very interested in this, and there will be funding, you know, that we could potentially look at putting into these. There's things like the topsoil project, um, and we also often get other bits of money that comes available. And I think we need to be looking at these on three or four sites at least, different soil types, different ways, getting farmer feedback, you guys leading it, kind of saying, you know, what's working, what's not, um, you know. Okay, brilliant. Okay, oh, excellent. That'd be. Also, kind of, under sowing, I know under, sun, under sowing can be difficult. Uh, we have, you know, it's getting your landlord to do it. Certainly, the family farm are hoping to get it done. It hasn't been done. Um, so it's just trying to always have that communication and making sure it's in there long enough. If it's only been in for four to six weeks, I personally wouldn't be wasting that much money um, doing it. Cover crop. Oh, no, Cover crops with said about. I know some people are now actually starting to rent land, putting it down as grass, get either getting silage cuts off it, um, and then actually putting the pigs on. So they're taking a bit more control away. They've got, I know, a landlord that's trying to get that into the rotation, but I think maybe it's about trying to use advisors more, the agronomists, to really start pushing the other benefits because there's huge benefits for soil, um, you know, probably black grass control, disease control, you know, some of the, they're on very tight veg rotation, some of these guys, so actually it wouldn't hurt to have something in here. Rings versus non-rings, I don't know how many people are ringing now or not, um, but certainly grass cover, you know, is coming back much quicker. Um, Buffer strips, again, we're kind of Robert covered these. All I'll quickly say though is you often, I think, need to go more than six metres, especially on a large slope. Seen uh, only a couple of weeks ago, a four metre margin and water pouring off after we had that heavy rain. 
um, onto the road. So, you know, make them big. A lot of landlords do have stewardship. So again, you know, you can move these options around as well. So if you're going onto a site, give them a call or give us a call and say, look, can you just come out and just say where the best place for this is? Um, and leave areas tusky because again, probably the gamekeepers are probably the worst for this, but they can get quite chewed up. Um, and actually you probably just create a, a better pathway straight out. Um, so some of the funding that we've currently got till June 18, um, we call them silt trap type because we can be quite um, creative with what is a silt trap as long as it's stopping dirty water. Um, you know, it could be some of that fencing. I know Neil has actually got some of that fencing available. These are some of the sites here. So we had, there's a, a silt trap in here. Again, water was just running straight off here. Um, this is a long one here, and the outflow actually then goes into a pond and then out into the river. Before, it was just coming straight through the farmyard. Um, these kind of road humps and cross drains are really f effective really simple to do um, and then this is a bit of a larger kind of trap here and we can fund up to kind of a hundred percent all we really ask is is a bit of in-kind time if you've got a tractor and trailer sitting there and you can get you know yourself one of your guys start moving some material you've got a digger on site um, you know we'll help with designs and all the permissions as well um, and all we have the one page contracts to kind of sign if you then move off we just make sure that the landlord, you know, has signed it as well to say that they'll keep it, you know, in position. Gateways and tracks. So there's that picture again. This is a site not far from here where we've put in these cross drains. Basically just deep um, channels filled with, um, at the bottom, rejects gravel and then stone here. This was two weeks ago when we had that heavy rain. You can see here there's no water flowing. So going straight out, put about 20 of these in. And I think with a lot of these things, you're better going little and often rather than one big thing. Because if the one big thing fails, you probably get into a mess. You know, little kind of swales and silt traps, that's just a little swale. Just dug out, it's only that deep. But again, it just takes the, the water and silt. Um, don't know if any of you know this chap. Um, so... He's, he's asleep at the moment, so uh, he did say he'd probably fall asleep. So yeah, um, went and saw Chris last year. Um, on here, again, kind of tracks where there's no way of moving the tracks. It's, you know, within the, um, the estate there. Um, and again, very light kind of soils and just some very simple silt traps, putting kind of small humps in to direct the water in. That is actually already collected quite a bit. Um, there were grants available. I think the landlord just, I said, I'm coming out, we'll talk about designs. He said, I've started it and just did it. So, um, um, and then also here, um, just small kind of grips, just taking the water. Um, and we've actually put in a kind of a small hump here with hardcore. And again, that's working, you know, act, machinery can get in and out. Um, if Chris had wanted a grant, you know, we would have, we would have happily um, paid and there's obviously that available for others. Um, this is probably the biggest one that we've done, which is at Sewell, um, so over towards Reefham in Norfolk. Uh, there's actually three traps here and these were taking a lot of water um, from a sugar beet pad and also from the road. We know where the water and nutrients were coming from because the very clever team at UEA are now sediment finger um, kind of tracking, so they can actually tell exactly you know, where that bit of silt has come from, DNA test it. Um, there's some quite clever technology out there, you know, looking at satellite data now as well, you can pick up where moving from. I know some agencies are using drones they're putting up. Um, so it's important, you know, we kind of have these features where they're needed. Um, this was a several thousand pound project, so you know we do have quite large sums of money available for these as well. 
This is very much on the agenda, slow the flow and in-stream works um, as flood prevention. This here is probably not that appropriate because, you know, if you haven't got the land, but if you've got water coming off woodland or from areas where it could be slowed before you get to the land, give us a shout because, again, we can fund this. Some of this is ridiculously cheap. Um, others, you know, you can put silt traps in. But these kind of ponds here in stream can be very effective. Um, and then, you know, we'll just make sure that you've got the permission to clean them out afterwards. Um, and it's all the same funding pot. So where do we kind of go next? I think these trials, you know, I think we need some more up-to-date data on leaching, um, on the benefits of, of grassing, looking at productivity as well. Um, you know, it needs to be very much a collaboration coming from. Um, you know, and I'm sure we could get some quite influential companies involved, you know, Coca-Cola, Tesco is already involved, you know, I'm sure there's others who would be, and I'm sure you guys have got links in there. The innovation group as well, which Rob was talking about, all the farmers who are doing it, because it's farmer led, and you just have advisors to facilitate, to help you, it's probably getting the best results out of all the schemes that have been going. Um, so if anyone's interested in that, it could be, you know, it can be around anything. You could have farmers from up north doing it down to the south, you know, you, and you just basically can go online and uh, kind of follow what everyone's doing. The landowner engagement, you know, please give us a shout if you have got an issue. You know, the more I think we keep, you know, getting on to um, landowners, because um, I don't think it's just you guys either. There's other people in the rotation, you know, to just try and, get the benefits across um, and with the trials as well I think you know we need to start looking at cost benefit you know it's it's fine saying this is great for this you know if it's environmental groundwater you guys need to you know if it's disease control productivity you know we need to be looking at the whole picture all the time the other big problem I've come across and um, is that the stewardship sometimes won't doesn't fit in with your lands because you rotate your landlord wants to have the basic payment scheme um, and they put an option on and don't tell you, so you go and put in an application and you can't. You know, it's almost looking in the future that you can kind of, you rent that field and you have control of that field for those two years and if you put on buffer strips, bird food, it goes through you rather than the landlord. And the landlord for those two years doesn't have that field. That's where, you know, it would give you a lot more control um, benefit. I think the producers would like it as well. Uh, the suppliers, sorry, come out and flower rich margins and everything else. And then also, which I think we're going to go on later, is what, what do you guys want as well to see um, going forward? Um, details there, there's also some sheets where Rob's sitting at the moment with some details and uh, wall sensitive farming with some contact details on. Um, please come and see me. There's Neil here and also Georgia at the back there um, as well if anyone's got any questions. So.